One question. What keeps someone in an addiction? Or what is the pull factor that makes an addiction attractive? Some would say, well, Rashid, it's the drugs. But that's it. when someone is in a physical addiction. What if it's a psych addiction? When someone keeps going around in circles. What if someone is in a cycle of violence in their interpersonal relationships over and over again? Why do they stay there? What keeps them there? What is the attractive thing about going around in circles? Because an addiction is going around in circles. What is so attractive about it? The pull factor is the false comfort it provides. Just think about it. Someone that's using crack, okay? The crack gives them an intense physical sensation. And this intense physical sen sensation makes them forget about all the issues they have to face. It's this intense physical sensation that they're craving after. The first high, I mean, the first physical high they get is the best high they will ever get from that substance. All other highs will be um, inferior to the primary high they felt because their body gets used to it. And because your body gets used to it, it's not that special anymore. That's why addicts turn into addicts because they experience this intense physical sensation, whether they are taking heroin or cocaine or it's smoke, whatever it is. And they are like, wow, this is great. But it's a short lived boost. But then they need to deal with daily life again and they want to get this boost again. But the next time they take the substance, it, it, it's, it's, they're still going to feel this high intensity, but it's not going to be as intense as the first time. So they think what's wrong. So they try again and again and again, wanting to go back to that first intense sensation that they will never experience again because that was a one time experience. But it's this comfort of this, uh, of this intense excitement that they felt that is what they're craving after. And that is the pull factor that keeps them going around in circles. Okay. Now, apart from physical addiction, let's look at narcissistic relationships. Now, online, often you have resources for women who come out of battered, uh, out of abusive relationships where they were battered. Okay, but there are also men that come out of such relationships. Don't forget about that. Now, but what was it that kept them so long in those toxic, violent relationships? The human being is built to go for safety. They just walk on a path, just cross a road, and suddenly a drunk driver comes out of nowhere, speeding at you. Your brain notices this, and your brain um, gives a warning to your kidneys, and inst instantly you begin to make adrenaline, and you, all, all you, the physical energy that is removed from your organs towards your... Um, limbs and immediately immediately you begin to run why your body is designed for safety so how can it be that there are people that remain in dangerous relationships for long periods of time going around in circles i'm telling you why it's the false comfort they receive but at the time you receive the false comfort it appears to be real comfort and because they they cling onto this false comfort, which they perceive as real. That's why they remain there, because they know that they will get some of that comfort if they remain. If though the comfort is false, it is still, in their experience, comfort, and that's what they're holding on to. And as long as they're holding on to that comfort, they remain stuck. If there wouldn't be any type of relief in the toxic relationship, they would be gone. If you have an alcoholic husband that only shouts and screams at his wives and there are no times of relief within that relationship or within that marriage, then sooner or later should be gone. Should be gone from there. But if he from time to time acts very sweet and kind, not, and he does it in, in a cyclical manner, 
Now she's trapped. Now she's, an, she's addicted to this false comfort. So going around in circles is a sign that you're clinging onto false comfort. Now that false comfort may be a real experience that you get from time to time. It may be a real benefit that you receive or that you obtain, but the benefit is short-lived. And because it's short-lived, it's not worth it in the long run. But because you're focused on that uh, short-term benefit, that's why you remain stuck. And here's another thing. There are people who are fully aware that they're going around in circles, but just don't want to face it. Why? Because to get out of that cycle means they now need to face life and they're not equipped nor trained to face life because they always avoid the stuff. So now their solution is they, when they are unloaded with the tension of going around in circles, they unload it on someone else. They victimize someone else so that they, so that the negative tension goes to the individual and nobody pays attention to them. So they are willingly seeking relief at expense of others so they don't have to face themselves. Think about those ghettos. Do you seriously think that all people in the ghetto want to leave the ghetto? Even though there's drug dealing going on, human trafficking, even though there is poverty, there are racist off, police officers coming by, despite all of that, many won't leave the ghetto. Because if they leave the ghetto, they now need to process things and now they need to face things. But if they're in the ghetto and they know how to predict people's behaviors, they get this sense of control. And they know when things heat up, you just put the neck of tension on someone else and that other individual will likely be shut down or beaten or whatever, and then you're left alone. So in the ghetto, there are relief mechanisms that are they're, they're available to you for free. And they and this is the false comfort many people from the ghetto are holding on to. Many of the guys in the streets know very well that being in the streets imply that they can be shot or that they can be targeted or they may be arrested and they may end up in jail. But why are they still in the streets? There is this false comfort that they get by being in the streets. And that false comfort is they don't have to face anything. Even if they've been victimized as a community and it wasn't their fault, they still have to face they've been victimized and they ought to process it, it to go towards solution. But that's, that it will not be easy. So what they do is, is they have this lifestyle of resistance against the system, but this lifestyle of resistance doesn't get them anywhere. And when they realize that, that it doesn't get them anywhere, what do they do? They take it out on someone who looks just like them. That's how it goes. That's why the ghetto is in a cycle, a, say, a loop of self-destruction. And people don't leave it because there is false comfort involved. Apart from the ghetto, let's pick another example. Let's say you have someone that has a full-time job that exhausts them. They're drained. They don't, they don't have any strength left for their family, nor for their uh, friends not even for themselves, but why is it that they keep that job that exhausts them? They keep the job because there's false comfort. At the job, they may be a manager or a supervisor, and they get validation from those that work there. And if they feel bad about themselves, they can just, can just stick out their anger on one of the uh, employees under their charge, and that employee knows I can better behave or do what my superior says or else I'm lose my job. So the fright of the other co-workers that provokes co-workers to please them is what relieves them from facing that they are stuck in a, in a cycle that goes at their expense. So their validation as a superior supervisor or whatever at the job combined with the paycheck they receive is their um, false comfort. But most of the money they receive, they can't in spend it the way they want anyway because they need to work full time. So even if it's obvious that they need to change something in their lives, they need to face a challenge for things to become better, they don't want to face a challenge. Instead, they want to unload their crap so they are left alone. And often they will sacrifice 
the job of one of the other employees. And by doing that, it will also sacrifice his well-being because probably he needed that job. He may become homeless. They don't care as long as they, they are relieved from whatever is haunting them. Because they're holding on to false comfort. False comfort is also called an idol in scripture. An idol is a comfort that will not last. An idol is a comfort that will expire. So that's why it's false comfort, because it's not reliable. It's predictable. Y you will get it from time to time. Whether it's a paycheck, whether it's dumping negative energy on someone else, or whether it's approval by society, whatever it is, you will get it. It's predictable, but it's not reliable because it can fill you anytime and it's short-lived. But don't you realize that this is the modus operandi or standard way people operate in the world, chasing after false comfort? The rest of us, there's something promised onto them if they just put in the effort. So they put in the effort and they're chasing the enduring benefits of the comfort. But that comfort or that reward that they're chasing after is short, short lived. So the long, term benefits that they're, they're hoping to receive, they'll never get it. So they go around in circles, in circles, to the body's age, and then they die. And they did not do God's will. That's how demons do it. They come with false comfort to get you away from doing God's will. So you won't walk by faith. So you won't walk in life in abundance. And here's one thing I want you to realize. There are many relationships out there. I'm not just talking about marriages, okay? I'm talking about friendships, business relationships, family relationships. There are many relationships out there who are not approved by God. So Christ is not involved in them because those relationships are, they are toxic. Or better said, those relationships are a spinning wheel. Just think about it. If you have relatives, that seldom call you, seldom contact you. And today with instant communication, there's no excuse not to contact anyone if it's necessary. But those relatives never show any oh, uh, affectionate interest in you. But at family gatherings or in at birthdays, do expect you to respect them or better to validate them. And if you don't, they will begin to argue with you. And when they're arguing with you, after a while, they will stop, then they're kind to you again, so you're at ease, so you lower your guard, and then it starts over again. What's going on? You're going around in circles with those relationships. Those relationships are draining you. Or it can be that um, you, let's say you're, let's say you're single as Satan in the world, and Satan sends someone into your life. And this individual he sends will blow your mind. He or she's everything you ever wanted. But here's the thing. What you wanted wasn't right for you. What you wanted is not in your best interest. Because what you wanted is something that can't be sustained. What you want is something that cannot last. last. Because what you want is what society conditions you into. And society that conditions you conditions you in a trap. What you want will eventually destroy you. What you want is someone where you'll never be challenged mentally nor emotionally and they just go at ease automatically that does not exist so if it happens that you're overwhelmed with everything you've ever wanted 99 out of 100 times so most of the time it's a setup by the enemy to destroy you so let's say you receive the so-called love of your life walks right into your life at the right time and everything goes smooth and easy. And later, you find out that the individual has been cheating on you all, all the time. You also find out that the individual called the authorities on you, lied that you abused them, that you did all these weird things. So now you have court cases against you. Now you may face jail time for domestic violence, even though the domestic violence never happened. What happened there? You're now going around in circles because what you wanted was not good for you. 
That's why believers ought to be renewed in their mind. Because many believers still long for things that are not in their best interest. Because the things they want are things they've been conditioned into by the world. But because many believers still have a worldly way of thinking, because they are not renewed in their mind, they're still clinging after things that will destroy them. But when they are frustrated because they don't get what they want, the enemy begins to flash images to them of people who got what they wanted. But the enemy doesn't show them all the toxic waste that comes from those relationships or those businesses or whatever it is that they want. Because that's how the world works. The world conditions you to desire certain things, but the things they condition you to desire will destroy you in the long run. But they won't show you the long-term side effects and the eventual destruction that will come. They'll only show you the short-term bliss. That's how advertisement works. That's what Satan is doing to believers who aren't renewed in their mind. Because those believers still have desires and longings that they, sh they have to be delivered from. But as long as they're not delivered, Satan still has something to trigger them. So then Satan begins to show them people with their own business who had success within a year. Or Satan will show them happy couples, well, so-called happy couples, who are posting intimate pictures on Instagram. Or they're having babies here and there. So Satan is showing them a fake promise, but it appears real. It doesn't mean that the core of what the believer wants it's bad, okay? But it's the context in which they long it that's wrong. For example, a believer may want to have financial prosperity. And that core is good because God promises that. But the context of how they want it means via their own business, by being successful in the business world or in the banking industry, that's the context they need to be delivered from. But because they don't see that the context is worldly and it's a trap. It can be that the believer longs for marriage and the family and that's a good desire it's a natural it's a natural thing so god will always support that but it can be that they want things to be romantic it can be they're looking for the one it can be they want a twin fling it can be that they want children that will validate them so there's a context that in which they desire things and they need to be delivered from, from, that, from that context because if they're not delivered from that context if they receive the core of what they want, even if what they want is natural and good, that thing that's natural and good they receive will be ruined by the context in which they long it. Okay? And that's what the enemy often does. When believers are not delivered from worldly thinking yet, the enemy will come with flashes of people who got things in the context they wanted just to cause more frustration in the believer and that's how the enemy eventually leads believers to false teachers that will tell them how to get what they want. But what they want is in the wrong context. So their desires have to be cleansed by the Holy Spirit. And the way they're cleansed by the Holy Spirit is by them renewing their mind. Okay? But because many believers are clinging onto the context of the world, they're now triggered into false teachings. That's why Christ said, beware that no man deceive you. Okay? So often, it's not the core of what people long that's wrong, but it's the context in which they long it, or the terms they're holding on to. There are people out there that God wants you to be free from, because those people will expect you to align yourself with their terms, with their conditions. But their condition and the terms relate to a context that's not supported by the Holy Spirit, because that context is worldly and is self-destructive. But those people are not willing to examine themselves nor to seek any deliverance. So eventually they will take offense at you and they will blame you. They will charge you and even blackmail you to conform to their terms and their conditions. Even if it means that you have to go against your own long-term well-being. Because such people are self-focused or they're narcissistic, they don't care. The only thing they, they are concerned about is that they are validated. Such people God wants you to be free from. And it's often such people 
that Satan will push into your life when you're going through your deliverance process. Don't think it's a strange thing that you're going through your deliverance process, you are renewing your mind, and suddenly you have all those people that pop up in your life. Suddenly, you don't have to make effort to meet new people who just appear in your life. It's not always a blessing. There are times it's the enemy doing it to stop you from progressing in the, renewing of, in the renewal of your mind. That's why I told you, believers, look at the timing of when things happen. If you meet new people suddenly and things are going well and things are kind of moving for you in your circumstances, check the timing. What was going on right before that happened? Oh, you had a crisis right before that happened in your finances or people just uh, left you. So you were vulnerable, you were you were upset, you didn't know, so you were in a vulnerable state. And suddenly those people appeared. Oh, okay. Uh, and those people that appeared, are they believers? Do they follow Christ? Uh, no? Okay, then check them. They may be sent by the enemy. Or it can be that you just realized that you need to renew your mind and you're now praying and uh, decreeing and declaring. You're fasting also and suddenly people begin to call you often. People you had in your WhatsApp or in your telephone book for years, they never had any interest in calling you and suddenly they begin to call you, talking about all kinds of stuff. And when you open yourself up to them, you lower your guard and you begin to call them, now suddenly they can't answer your calls. Now what happened? Those people were provoked to call you and to contact you as a distraction. So, so listen, pay attention to the timing. Because this is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to go around in circles. And to get you in this loop of self-destruction, he will use people. He may even use believers who still have a worldly mindset. So always look at the context. Don't just embrace things because they appear good. Don't just embrace things because you have to label Christian or Christ on them. Because many will come in the name of Christ performing miracles, signs and wonders but they're not sent by Christ. Christ is not with them. Look at the context. Okay? I'm telling you, look at the context. There was this believer. He just realized that he need to be more active in his faith. And at a time in his life, he was a bit upset and disappointed with his relatives and with how society worked. And this is something, this is a testimony, not of me, but of a fellow believer. I don't have to mention names, but I'm just using it just to inspire you here. So this believer one day was at the library. And yet this, this Asian woman appeared, uh, approached him saying, would you like to join our church? We're going to have Bible study soon. And this believer was thinking, you know what? I made up my mind. I want to grow close to the Lord. I want to walk more by faith. And now... Suddenly someone asked me, come to the Bible study. So the believer thought, you know what, I'm going. When the believer went, there were other Asian women also. And that believer was single at the time. So the believer thought, oh, okay. So you have attractive women over here who want to learn about Christ. And I just made up my mind. I want to grow close to Christ. So this is God sent. So the believer, because it carried the label Christ with it, thought, is from the Most High. It's later that the believer realized, hold on a minute, I've been going to this Bible study for weeks now, but they don't talk about Christ that much. They talk about good works, they talk about um, your way of thinking, they talk about letting go of stuff. So they're telling things that are true, things that are, that are good. But where is Christ? The believer began to feel that something doesn't add up. And later, the believer realized that he was being sucked into a cult. And he left that place and later found out that there was a cult where they worship God the Mother, which refers to Semiramis, a Babylonian goddess. But they, let's say, they disguised it so well that all the new members of that congregation didn't realize they were being led into a Babylonian cult. So that believer then learns, hold on. I need to pay close, close attention just because of carries the label Christ. And just because there are good things coming from it doesn't mean it's from God. 
And it's then that the believer realized afterwards that the enemy studied him and enemy realized, okay, this guy wants to serve Christ. He wants to grow. He's serious about it. We can't do anything about this decision, but we know what we're going to do. He is still frustrated. He's still, he's still looking for people that to treat him well. There is this cult over there where you have some witches that we can use as bait to lure him into self-destruction. And that's how it went. And such, and such things or similar things often happen. So believer, I'm telling you, look at the context. That implies look at the timing. Don't just embrace things because they arrive at the right time. Keep agreeing with Christ. Be at peace.